South African Council of Churches leaders have prayed for the country as it faces a number of challenges. These include allegations relating to the theft of the president's Palapala farm in Limpopo, economic hardships made worse by recent fuel price hikes. The SACC believes South Africa needs some divine intervention. Well, let's discuss this now with Bishop Malusi Mpumrana, the council's general secretary. Uh, Bishop Mpumrana, uh, good afternoon, and thank you very much uh, for your time here on ENCA. Yes, it's tough times indeed. As, as the world and South Africa was dealing with the aftermath of the pandemic, then you have the impact of the Russia-Ukraine war that we see in the rise of fuel prices, the rise in food prices like wheat. So the SACC thinking that the, we need something more to assist us. What are your thoughts? Well, on all these matters, uh, prayer doesn't go by itself. It goes with action. For example, as we pray for the Russia-Ukraine war, we engage, for example, with the efforts to support the Pope Francis, the Vatican, in their efforts for mediation, because that's a church's initiative. And so we work, therefore, with the embassy of the Vatican in Pretoria to support the efforts of the Pope, because it is important. We do the same with the World Council of Churches, because a lot of the Orthodox churches, including the Russian Orthodox Church, are members of the World Council of Churches. So as we pray, we're also working, you know, uh, you know behind the scenes with a number of efforts that we make so that we can at least come to some kind of solution in the Ukraine because of its importance for the economy of, of our country and therefore the impact on our congregations. Yes, uh, the, 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 the war has impacted the, the, other the war. Yeah, Bishop, sorry to come in. The war, as you said, has impacted us in our country with prices of fuel and food going up, exacerbating South Africa's economic uh, troubles. And the role of the church there, how, what, what are the thoughts of the SACC when it comes to South Africa's economic troubles? Well, if we focus on the Ukraine, we talk about what are the things that we need. For example, fertilizer. Um, then you know we would urge South African companies that have the capacity to to to, to develop a, a, a fertilizer manufacturing to do so not only for South Africa but for the continent as well because it it is clear that this effect of this war is going to drag on I would imagine until the next year so a, a number of these things then have become but at the same time we are going into we've got an ongoing a, a conversation right now of what we call the initiative for economic transformation that says that the bulk of South Africans are in what we call the excluded majority. And if you look at the impact on that excluded majority, we have to fast track ways of bringing those people into active participation in the economy. The must, I mean, for example, we are calling for a Marshall Plan for young people because you, got, you cannot have a situation where 75% of young people are unemployed. This calls for drastic and unusual extraordinary measures. And that's what uh, our economists are working with us to try and create my recommendations for that will put into our advocacy. At the social level, you've just mentioned the youth, you've mentioned the word advocacy. Uh, as the SACC, yes, praying for a troubled nation, you said, has to be accompanied with action. At the social level, what are the church initiatives? I interviewed you weeks ago after the devastating floods in KwaZulu-Natal, and the church was getting involved there in the front line to ensure that whatever aid, assistance, whatever relief was being given would reach the intended uh, beneficiaries. I've just been there. In fact, we've, we were thus just in case again last week. Uh, and this time we called it a visitation of concern. And the concern was about the fact that you've got people sitting in these halls for two months. I mean, anywhere in the world, if there's a, an emergency like this, within 10 days, 14 days, they've been at least put into some kind of family units, even if they are unsatisfactory like tents. But we haven't done that. And so we invited the Minister of Human Settlements 
uh, who came together with the MEC uh, in KZN to really lay out what they are trying to do and what the challenges have been. And they did this. They were grateful for it because they came to address the church leaders, national leaders, provincial leaders, as well as local leaders from the affected communities. So the idea here is to campaign for a fast-track process to make sure that, I mean, the indignity of sending like 50 families in one hall, husbands and wives, children of all ages, pregnant teenagers. It, I mean, the kind of horror stories you're beginning to hear suggest that we cannot pastorally keep quiet. We have to drive to make sure that a, a solution is found for their accommodation. Of course, we understand. They can't go back to the same places, and therefore new lands have to be found, and that's part of the, of the agenda. The KwaZulu Natal Christian Council currently uh, is working on, I went to visit some of the sites, on some of the sites that they would like to temporarily help those people move to while they're working with government to get the permanent solutions. So those are some of the things that we're trying to do in the short term. Okay, finally, if you may be brief in answering this one, Bishop Pumlana, praying for the nation would also, I suppose, would include praying for the leaders. What's your main prayer for our leaders today, particularly our president, post the Palapala farm issue that we are grappling with uh, in the country today? <laughs> You know, we have said that we are praying for the truth to come out in all its purity. Doesn't matter how ugly it is, it must come out. And, and, and for us, we really need truthfulness on the part of our leaders. And, and, and that if, if the truth is nasty and ugly, then we, we live with it. And if the truth, if what we're hearing is not what actually happened and there's an alternative truth, then that too must come out and then we get this behind us. We would like to, to appeal to all leaders everywhere in this country that the most important ethical value for leaders is being able to stand up for the truth, whether it is good or bad. Uh, I mean, there is a psalm that says, the just person stand up for the truth even if even if it hurts them and that's what we want thank you very much uh, that's uh, bishop uh, melusi mpumlwana general secretary of the south african council of churches some of the thoughts they uh, about the, what the church is worried about concerned about in the country and what they are praying for